Welcome to Explore Embedded. In the previous video, you have seen the architecture of the AVR microcontrollers. Now, in this video, we will see uh, the tools that are required to get started with AVR. So, as you can see in the diagram, there are two sets of things that you would require to work uh, with AVR microcontrollers. First is the software part. And in software, uh, whenever you write a program, so basically in this tutorial, we'll be writing programs in C uh, for the AVR microcontroller, and then we need to compile uh, that program, and then it generates a hex file. Uh, this is often referred as cross compiling because the code that you're trying to compile is not for the uh, computer on which you're writing the code, it is for a different processor. So once we cross compile the code, it generates a hex file. So and that hex file is transferred to the final microcontroller chip with the help of a programmer. In this tutorial, we'll look at all these tools and how to set it up on Windows uh, for Linux and uh, other operating systems. There are similar, I mean, there are tools uh, which you can configure and use but uh, primarily we'll be speaking about windows in this tutorial so uh, the the software part for windows it's taken care by a free software called atmel studio it's fairly popular among developers and uh, with atmel studio you can write uh, write the c code it it comes in built with a compile, compiler called AVR GCC. So this is a free version, uh, sorry, the open source uh, version of GCC compiler for AVR microcontrollers. And then uh, it is used to, all this is integrated, uh, the compiler uh, is integrated in the uh, Atmel Studio 6 software. So, so we'll, we'll be speaking about installing Atmel Studio 6 and writing the basic code and compiling it in this tutorial. And once uh, we have the final hex file, uh, we need to transfer it to the microcontroller and for that there are various programmers available and you could use any of them and transfer the hex file to the controller. Now, uh, to install Atmel Studio on your computer, you can head over to the link uh, the link uh, will be I'll be putting the link in the video description you can just check that so uh, you can click on download now and then uh, there, are, there are a couple of options and uh, if you have a uh, previous version installed you can use you can use this particular option if you're setting it up for the first time uh, this is the download that is recommended it might ask you for a uh, simple registration which you could do and proceed and install the software now once the software is installed it comes up something like this on your computer so in the previous version as you can see it was AVR studio the Atmel has uh, you know uh, skipped the studio tag and gone with the uh, instead of AVR studio they've gone with the Atmel studio so this does not only supports the AVR series of controllers but also the ARM series of uh, controllers from Atmel so the software is a little bulky so it takes a little time to load So once the software uh, loads, this is the window that you get. And uh, so let's go ahead and create a new project and see how it goes. So click on new, new project. Then uh, this is an option for what compiler you'd be using. So you'd be using the AVR GCCC, which is open source and free, and then. Uh, here you can specify the path where the application needs to be stored and you can also give the name for the project let's say LED blinking so once you do that and if you check this it will create a directory and store all the files that you create inside that and the next obvious thing is to select the device 
that you'll be working on and then in this series will be working on 80 mega 32 so you can search that and select now it, it tells you about you know there's a link for the data sheet and all the uh, tools the programmer tools that this particular controller supports are also listed here so you can select on ok click on ok and then you will have the project page loading up okay so uh, this is the project uh, file that it loads by default you would get a c file uh, created with the project and as you could see it includes a header file called avrio.h this header file includes uh, the port definitions for the controller and you know all the registers the sfrs and all of those details are included uh, with this option so uh, we'll look into this uh, when we write the first uh, you know code so uh, so this is the basic setup you create uh, uh, you install the AV Atmel Studio 6 and create a new project and you'll get this uh, basic code now there are a few settings that we need to uh, make in order uh, you know in order to uh, comply with the hardware that you're using so uh, let us go back and look at what would be the minimum or the basic requirements uh, you know, or the basic connections that are required to work with this now this is the pen diagram for the 80 mega 32 now uh, the first uh, thing that you need to uh, do while working with this is you need to give a 5 volts uh, power supply between the vcc and the ground pins of the microcontroller so this is the vcc pin and uh, this is the ground pin so this needs to be connected to 5 volts so since this is a 5 volts device and this is also uh, the ground pin and apart from that uh, we need to tie the reset pin to vcc so we have a reset pin here so what is usually done is this reset pin is connected uh, to to vcc with the help of a pull up resistor so this is 5 volts and also to manually reset the controller a switch is connected between reset and ground so uh, when whenever the pin receives uh, a logic zero the controller resets so uh, so these this is the basic connection that is required to be made so these two pins need to be connected to the power supply and the reset pins need need to be connected to a reset circuit now apart from that in order to transfer the flash i mean the hex file from the computer to the uh, flash memory of the uh, microcontroller uh, there, there are a couple of ways that you can do that so the first thing uh, which is usually done is uh, use of a isp programmer now this programmer it uses a protocol called as spi or serial peripheral interface and then you usually find a connector of uh, 3 cross 2 or 5 cross 2 on the uh, development boards or the programmers with which you connect to the ic now what you could see here you could find uh, these pins on the uh, controller as alternate pin functions so uh, the basic connections that are required usually are ground vcc reset this is the clock for the spi communication then this is master in slave out and master out slave in so these are the connections that are done in order to transfer the code from the uh, computer to the programmer now you, it could be done in other ways as well if the controller has a bootloader then you, you don't need an spi interface the program can also be transferred with the help of rx and tx pins even these can be used to transfer the hex file from the computer to the controller now apart from this the controller has an internal oscillator which works at 1 megahertz by default however in order to make it run at a faster rate you could also connect uh, 
external crystal oscillators bit oscillator between pins 12 and 13 so you usually find this connected on most of the development boards and this works up to 20 megahertz in in our uh, this is connected to a capacitor through ground so uh, this is 16 megahertz crystal that we would be using in all our tutorials we'll discuss about the hardware uh, in greater depth as we do the hands-on interfacing the point here is so whatever crystal we uh, connect to the microcontroller it needs to be set that frequency needs to be set in the Atmel Studio. So, uh, so the basic uh, things or the basic setup that that is always required to be done is this. So, uh, to set up the uh, controller frequency or the oscillator that is selected, we need to go uh, to uh, these options and then uh, give the frequency of the crystal or the oscillator that is used. And to do that we go to the symbols options here and then we add a symbol and then we specify the frequency of the CPU so if it is a 16 megahertz crystal that would be 16 followed by six zeros and also the optimization level is set to uh, we optimize for size and most of the time so you could all you could as well choose any other option but we optimize for size in most cases and also uh, ensure that you know ensure that the output files here are selected so uh, this is the hex file uh, we would be using uh, to transfer the code now once we have that set up uh, we can go ahead and write the first program like say uh, now this is just a you know, demonstration so it could be i mean whenever we will be dealing with a specific uh, topic we will do it again so you need not worry about what is being written so i'm just using a port i'm setting it to output and then uh, what i do in the main code is i just uh, turn on that port so this is port A and I'm setting all the bits of that port. So this is uh, to show you uh, how to compile the code. So when you click on build and uh, click on build again, it, it compiles the code and tells you if it is compiled properly or if there are errors, it would tell you about them okay so uh, since it was a pretty simple thing so it has compiled the code and what you could see is uh, it has taken 178 bytes and then the fcpu or the frequency of the oscillator is also specified to the compiler with the option that we have selected now so uh, the code size is 128 bytes uh, out of 32 kilobytes that we have for this controller and once this is done uh, the path where we have created the uh, project it would also have an hex file created so let us look at that so the path in this case was this led blinking and if you and go inside this folder you would find a debug folder and that would have the hex file that we are looking for so this is the final hex file that is generated now this hex file is transferred uh, to the programmer i mean you know, with the help of programmer to the controller now if you can go back and check what you have is usually a setup of this type so you have a phi cross to connector in the programmer or the microcontroller board and a fire cross to connector on a programmer so this is connected to the computer with the help of usb and then uh, with the help of uh, another software the hex file is transferred to the microcontroller 
Now in order to transfer the hex file to the controller there are various softwares that, that can be used. So uh, there is a command line software which is fairly popular it's called the AVR dude. With this you can uh, give the path of the hex file that is created and then give appropriate commands to flash uh, the hex file. There are also uh, some graphical softwares like the uh, Extreme Burner, the uh, Explore Flash or the Kajama. All these softwares they uh, take the hex file and then uh, they transfer it to the controller. So in all of these softwares you need to select the microcontroller and then you need to browse the hex file and then you need to transfer it to the microcontroller depending on the programmer that you're using. So in the entire tutorial series we will be using a USB ASP programmer. Uh, this is the actual hardware and then I will be using any of these softwares to transfer the hex file to the microcontroller. Now uh, you could also if the if the controller has a bootloader or if the board comes with a bootloader and a USB to serial converter then it can also be used to program the controller. So it eliminates the need of an external programmer like this. Okay, so uh, in the next video we will brush up the basics of C that, that are required to program embed systems and then we will possibly be doing a first uh, example in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.